Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial today. Uh, today I'm going to be doing more of a, a tips and tricks video or a do's and don'ts uh, on making YouTube channel backgrounds. Uh, I've got an example here of what um, my all my pet hates are. I'm going to go through them and we're going to use this exact design to go through and show how I would change it to make it a uh, uh, little better. Um, uh, so let's start off. Uh, the first thing I really hate uh, is overlaying images like this here. So as you can see, they've literally dumped two images on top. Uh, it's just a, a straight cut line. It's something I really don't like. Um, what I'd usually try and do is, uh, if it's an image, I have to rasterize it to be able to edit it. So I'm just going to right click on the layer. Get a rasterize layer. In fact, I'll do that to all of my layers now, just to get it over and done with. Rasterize layers, you can do it in bulk, bulk action by selecting all of them. Um, using click on one, hold shift and click on the furthest one away. Right click and rasterize layers. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get on my uh, eraser, or my rubber, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to select the layer I want, which is I it's this one, yep. Yeah. I'm going to make it larger, just a little bit, to about 250. That's large enough. And I'm going to bring the hardness all the way down, which will make the edges softer. So as I, as, as I bring away from here, it creates a nice gradient. As you can see, it blends into the other one. Another uh, option you can do for this, um, it's, it's a, it takes a little longer, but you can be a bit more precise with it. You can get your gradient tool. You, uh, it's under the bucket sometimes. You have to click and hold and select the gradient sometimes. Uh, you go to your gradient settings. You pick the color to transparency one. Click OK. And what you can do is you can create a new layer above the layer, and you can just do a gradient, for example, like this. So you've got a gradient here, you can select the pixels of that gradient, so select the area of it by right click on the preview and go into select pixels. And you, can and you can select the layer below and click delete, or sometimes you can use your eraser and just rub out what you want. And then I'm just going to um, delete the layer that we've uh, made for the gradient. And as you can see it's made a very clean and exact uh, gradient line. So I'm just going to finish softening off that image around here. I'm not worrying too much about what's on the image. Um, of course it does make sense just showing a hand, but I think that's is it's okay for now. Oh, so it's a nice soft image. Um, I'm just going to do that the same to the image above. Make it a little bit smaller so we can be a bit more precise. Okay, well, it doesn't matter here because it will be covered up anyway. As you can see, it's already looking much better. Um, getting on to the next thing now is stretched images. This is something which a lot of designers know not to do, but it's surprising how many people do it and it really frustrates me. Skewing was what it's called, skewing an image. It defeats the point of having it there, I believe. Um, so one tip I will use is I'm going to bring this image back in because it's ruined now. If, if I try and uh, let me just show you, if I try and bring it back to its proportion, uh, I guess it could look okay, but I'm just going to bring it back in anyway. Um, so we can use it larger. Um, so we go to Far Cry 3, bring in the image. So as you can see, um, that looks quite nice actually. Bring it to the top. Uh, click Enter to place it because it's a new image. Bring it to the top. Uh, as you can see, um, we've got our point, our corners at each area, our handles. Um, which, if you can't see, you can see by pressing Control T to transform it. And if you hold down Shift um, and drag the corners in, it keeps the aspect ratio. So even if you're going up and down, left and right, it's always going to keep the same proportion between the height and the width, uh, which is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this. Um, where I wanted to, so I'm going to place the top left corner uh, where I want it to stay. I'm going to bring in the right side until it gets to the width I want it. Uh, so I don't think I want its forehead, so I'm just going to keep holding shift, which will keep the image to its axis, so it'll, it'll, it'll only um, move. Oh, my bad. Um, so it'll only move up and down. I'm just going to move up to where I want it, which is there. So that's a nice header. And then we're going to use the tip I used last time, so I'm just going to soften the edges. Put a rasterized layer. edges a bit more. I think I need to remove the leather blow. Yes, I do. I'm just going to soften the edges a bit more. 
make it a larger brush because I'd rather it be a little bit more uh, subtle on there. Right, so uh, now we've got our, our header uh, sorted, I'm just going to increase, uh, just my personal preferences, I'm going to increase the uh, transparency of the background. Just so it blocks off the header, it just frustrates me. So I'm just going to close, whoops, close up my overlay. Um, so the next thing I don't like is images uh, being at the edge of the screen. Uh, you may be able to see them in this design, um, but everyone has a different size screen, so they can't always see all the way to the edge of your image. Uh, one tip that I like doing is if, if you use the bottom left um, uh, view tool down here to the bottom left, you can press 100%, or just type in 100, it automatically goes to percent, and it shows you um, pixel by pixel the size as you will be seeing it in the final design. Uh, although you have to account for um, the fact that you've got your, your toolbars and stuff here, you can then see roughly how much um, more of the channel you're going to be able to see. For example, we know that the border will be about that much, and you can only see his head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring him in. Bring him in a little bit more. And then I'm just going to soften the edges like I have with my previous images. Rasterize layer. A little smaller. There we go, so it looks much better. Uh, I might bring gun size as well because we'd like to see the this gun. Should be that a bit more. There we go. So that's positioned nicely. Um, one of the last tips, which isn't it isn't as important as the previous ones. Um, but it, it still affects the design, I think, is the fonts. Uh, I don't like it when people use uh, the very default fonts like Arial, which this is at the moment, uh, or some of the really, really basic ones that you'd use in, for example, a normal uh, Microsoft Word document. Uh, it's pretty nice to be inventive. I, I stay within about 15 fonts, which I use in all my designs. Uh, the, mo the one I'd recommend um, to anyone who's into Call of Duty or, I guess, gaming in general is Bank Gothic. Uh, it's, the, it's the font that they've used in every, in every Call of Duty. Um, the recent one for Black Ops 2 is a modified version of this. Um, so, so it's one that a lot of you guys will want on your on your machine to install. Um, so any, any font, I'm just going to pick my favourite one at the moment, the EA font. Um, and simple as that, just using an inventive font. Uh, fonts are very easy to install. Uh, you can use websites like, my favourite is Stafont. So what you do is, bad, probably the wrong URL. There we go. Um, so what you do is you search either by category, like cartoon fonts, uh, grunge fonts, and so on, or you can type in a font that you like. Uh, it's as simple as I quite like this one, so I'm going to download it for you. Uh, you download. Uh, it downloads a zip file. Once it's finished installing, you should open up the zip file. No need to extract it extract it, sorry. Uh, all you need to do is find this file, which is true type font. Uh, it'll also have a little A symbol on a page. Double click on it. It will show you a preview. Uh, and then you click install. And it's simple as. Uh, I will say one thing though, uh, when you've got a programs open, uh, I now can't use that, that program, uh, that font, sorry, in Photoshop until I've restarted it. Uh, because the program loads the font when it starts. So uh, I can't use that just yet, but I can restart Photoshop and use it. Um, and that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, another thing is I, I want to be doing more tutorials uh, coming up soon, uh, more practical ones that will help you. Um, so if you have any ideas, please suggest them below. And yes, thanks for watching. Hey, just one more thing before I go. Uh, I'd like to know that if I get 20 likes on this video, uh, I'm going to be releasing a giveaway pack which will include my template, uh, a ton of images and textures which will help you uh, develop and make your own uh, YouTube backgrounds. Uh, I'll also be doing tutorials on how to use this graphics pack, uh, so uh, 20 likes, uh, share, like, rate, comment, thanks.